All right, everyone. Welcome back. Come here. So, you wouldn't know this for any reason, but I have a dog who's also named Jake. It's like we're going to call this Q Jake's Corner. I'm going to try to get him over here. Come here, buddy. Come here. Come here. You got to come sit with me. You got to come sit with me. Come on. Come on. I adopted him, this fine specimen, uh, with the name Jake, many years ago now. Come on. Okay, so we did it. So we did it. All right, well, I adopted this fine specimen. I don't know if he'll stay up here with me. About four or five years ago now. And his name was already Jake. So I wasn't about to change it. So I have a dog named Jake. And my name is Jake. So take that for what it's worth. Anyway, he's my bud. Mwah. And I figured we'll uh, do a little car video here. Um, just something different. Friday, it's Saturday night. Um, just kind of making dinner and stuff. And I figured I'd talk a little bit about the Tesla Cybertruck. All right, so I'm sure you've all watched videos on it, so I'm going to take a different angle on this than what you might be used to, but we'll go over some specs really fast. Everyone probably knows by now, it's bulletproof to, like, handgun rounds or whatever, all stainless steel. Obviously, the looks are what they are. Um, we'll talk more about that later. 600 horsepower dual motor model, 845 horsepower tri-motor model, called the Cyber Beast. <laughs> and then they have these single-motor rear-wheel drive, model which has the lowest range up to 11,000 pounds towing with the right packages and driving range is anywhere from like 340 to 500 miles if you get the extended battery pack which goes in the front i believe air suspension so you can tip the rear end down to load it and go off road um anywhere from 80 to 100 thousand dollars depending on what you get actually it looks like you might be able to get a cheaper one if you get the two-wheel drive version it's just giving you a rough overlook here um, you know, four second or less, zero to 60, it's down to 2.6 with the 845 horse one. I mean, we all know electric cars in general have ridiculous performance. Um, this thing actually might have some decent off-road capability. It has 35 degree approach and 28 degree departure angles. And that's just air suspension, you know, for a pickup anyway, it probably has above average off-roading capability. Um, single motors capped at 7,500 pounds towing. This will come into uh, fruition later. We're going to talk about this. And then it has 2,500 pounds payload, which is actually kind of between a half ton and a three quarter ton truck. And with an 11,000 pound towing total max, it's a little low for a three quarter ton, but the payload's kind of close. So it's kind of almost like a five ace ton, like the Nissan Titan XD sort of kind of. We're going to compare it to half ton truck for the sake of this argument, um, which isn't necessarily fair to the half tons, but we'll talk all about uh, the interior is kind of what I would call standard affair for any Tesla. Minimalist, if you like that, great. If you don't, then you're not going to like it. Uh, obviously, good interior room, all things considered, being that it's kind of a just massive vehicle, um, you know, for a uh, truck. You know, it's even wider than, like, most, most trucks. So you get a bigger interior. Um, and then I think that they have... <laughs> oh, look at that. I think that they have, uh... yeah, they have a four-door, and then I think they have a two-door, too, I think. I don't remember now. Anyway, it doesn't really matter what we're going to talk about. You want all those details, there's better channels for that. What I want to talk about, okay, first of all, let's discuss the style. Now, I'm going to take a different angle on it. So, cosmetically speaking, I don't really care for the style, right? It's a little too space agey looking for me. Um, but that being said, I think, you know, it's an acquired taste probably, right? You see them in real life, they're going to be wild looking. It's kind of neat. It's something different. I can appreciate it from that perspective. Um, do I think that this will be the styling for a long time on these? Probably not. I'm thinking that they'll probably, you know, two, three years in, maybe make it a little more common eye styling to the rest of the Tesla fleet. I could be totally wrong on that. Maybe they'll make the rest of the Tesla fleet look like this. So we'll see. This is the thing about the styling now that we should talk about. So regardless of if you like the way it looks or not, what I'm worried about is the way the styling interrupts the function. And by that I mean, for example, I could put a picture on the screen, but you know, you've got this wedge looking shaped vehicle. We've all seen pictures of the Cybertruck for years now. Well, there are, if you're gonna actually use this thing as more than a lifestyle vehicle, if you wanna actually do work with it, the problem with that is ladder racks and like 
you know, any of your standard upfitter like caps and and uh, you know, just things that like a construction worker use toolboxes, that's what I was looking for. Um, all that stuff's not gonna fit that would fit in any normal pickup, which is like kind of offset by the fact that the Cybertruck has other features that a normal pickup doesn't. And I think it has like, the built-in tonneau cover and everything, so that's kind of cool, I guess. But I don't know. Like, it just, it actually, for all the function it adds, it's, it is taking away things that I think the average Joe would use. Now, is this realistically going to be a construction worker's truck? Not really. At least not yet. They're probably, if they wanted to go electric, they're going to go electric F-150 at the moment. And maybe the Silverado once it comes out in the Ram. Um, but I don't know. It'd be cool, like... I just think it'd be cool if this thing had a regular kind of regular dimension bed just because then you could use all that stuff that already exists in the marketplace, um, you know, for your kind of construction type uses and stuff like that. Maybe in real life this thing will, will be relatively easy to use for those purposes. I don't know. Come on back up, bud. He, uh, he went and decided to go back down his bed. But anyway, so that kind of that kind of is a bit of a sticking point for me is the function of it. But, you know, it's kind of hard without being able to use it in my day-to-day -day life. I don't know. Um, the, uh, the width of the truck is annoying for parking. Um, that's just something. But, like, a Raptor is why. A Ram TRX is why. That's just, like, a thing now. We've, I guess we've just decided that we need trucks to be 102 inches wide. <laughs> anyway, not really that wide. But I digress. Um, <clears throat> here's the big thing I want to talk about, though. Towing and empty range okay so empty the range is really pretty phenomenal and i won't go into the details in this video but there is new battery technology in these cyber trucks apparently that allow them to be charged basically allow them to be charged even faster and allow them to have smaller batteries with more range just better technology all around which is awesome but you know, and, and now we're at a point where it's like, okay, you have up to 500 miles range with that battery pack, which is a lot of money, but you know, you could buy it, uh, the, the front battery pack. So that's pretty good. Um, let's say that, let's just say it's 500 pounds. It eats into 500 pounds of your payload. Now you've got 500 miles range, 2000 pound payload, four door truck, and you could tow a trailer with that up to 10,500 pounds. Well, a little less than that with you and cargo, but you know, over 10,000 pounds um, and you'd be, you know, you'd be safe. So suddenly, right now we're in that half time truck category. So if I take a 6.2 V8 Chevy, a 5.7 Ram, an EcoBoost Ford, you know, empty range is going to be tight 500 miles. Maybe it's 500 miles. I don't really think so. The Chevys I know are 24 gallon tanks. They're definitely not. But the, the Fords have like a 33 gallon tank, 34 gallon tank on some of the half tons. So they might get to 500 miles range if you're not beating on them um, empty. So that's, but that makes it really comparable, which is cool. Now towing, uh, you know, I find you get about half the miles per gallon towing that you do empty when you're towing like a camper, something with an air profile. Uh, I would assume that your electric range would be similar, about half. I really don't know for sure. So take that with a grain of salt. Let's call it 250. Well, guess what? I mean, a truck with about 34 gallons of gas is going to have about a 250 mile range, uh, you know, towing that, that camper. Very comparable, right? You're in the ballpark now where you got me interested because I like to, I tow long distances with a 20 year old Silverado that I put an auxiliary tank in and it matters to me because I can do that. And if I can't put auxiliary battery pack in, which I actually can in this, then it would be no good to me, right? So that's really interesting to me. That makes me super excited that I could use this truck for something that I actually do in real life often, you know, multiple times a year. I think the towing performance is just unparalleled, obviously, especially if you get the 845 horse one. I mean, you know, zero to 60 towing is probably the same as my 20 year old Chevy empty. Like, that's just no comparison. The electric truck will always win, hands down, no arguments there. So lethal towing combination, in my opinion, all right, almost lethal. And I say that because they do still need to make pull-through chargers that you can get a trailer into easily all around the country. That's huge, right? And I just, would you would need that Gen, I think it's called the Gen 5 charging or Gen 4 charging, whatever the faster charging is. They need to really get, that would need to be prevalent throughout the country. 
and have pull through chargers and then I really think you could actually tow cross country with one of these trucks and it wouldn't be a burden it would be you know only maybe slightly worse recharge times refill times than a than a gas powered vehicle would be so like that's pretty cool that's that's a game changer I mean I, I people aren't really talking about that but that's a game changer with the Cybertruck in my opinion okay um Yep, we covered that. The fact that it's bulletproof. I'm not going to talk a bunch about this. I I mean, it's neat. I, I guess if you're doing unscrupulous things, maybe it comes in handy. You know, cops are shooting at you and you can't get shot, you know, or, or other gang members, you know, okay, fine. I, do I really think, like, I personally benefit from an exterior that strong? I mean, if you're chucking logs into the back of the thing and out in the woods and sliding into trees here and there, that would be really nice because you could really use this thing as a truck and, and it wouldn't get beat up and wouldn't look like crap. On the flip side, because of the how wide it is and the fact that the bed is a little odd-shaped and everything else, I just don't know how many people are going to really use it like that. So it's kind of like you have this feature that you then can't use that well because the truck is not really designed to do that. Sort of. So I don't know. Again, that's where I think if I had it, my hands on it in real life, I could give a better determine if that actually is helpful. Um, but uh, but it's I mean it's cool. It's yeah, you know, it's nice to know that your ex girl or your girlfriend can get mad at you and break up with you, kick your truck, and she's gonna break her toes and not dent your truck. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Um, anyway, power uh, power is next to my list. We kind of talked about it. It's just no comparison. I mean. Even like a Raptor R or TRX, you know, they have similar horsepower. Still less, this is 845. Um, you know, and that electric motor is the way they hit. It's just a different thing. Obviously, at real high speeds, I guess it might be a little slower because that's where the gas engines kind of catch up. But how fast do you want to drive in a truck anyway? Like 100 miles an hour is plenty, in my opinion. Um, so, zero to 100, this thing's going to be any truck and most cars on the road. So, that's just, there's not much to even say. Now here's a huge one. This kind of circles back into the towing, but I didn't want to cloud that. Four-wheel steering. First of all, that makes a huge difference because it helps make the width of the truck less of an issue, right? You can turn it a lot tighter turning circle, and it just makes it easier to park and stuff like that. So that's awesome. Um, also, though, people don't talk about this a lot. If, if made correctly, which I'm sure this is, it actually can effectively eliminate trailer sway, at least in like most normal scenarios. Because what happens is, as your trailer starts to sway, the rear tires of the truck can actually turn a little bit, countering that sway, and then just keep the truck going straight. So you don't get that harmonic created where that sway gets bigger and bigger, and then the ascent of the truck starts to move more and more and more, and they just start to get, it's an undampened spring, right? It just gets out of control. That those tires being able to, rear tires being able to move actually can counteract that. Um, if you want more information on that, there's a, video of Tremec, or sorry, I think it was ZF. ZF or Tremec made a rear 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 wheel steer kit for an F-150 and they added that feature into it and they showed how it stopped trailer sway, which was like super, super cool. Um, I don't know if they ever released it for production, but it was like a prototype, but it's a really good video. And so assuming this can do that, which it probably can, um, that's like a huge benefit that no other truck has other than maybe the uh, Hummer. I'm not really sure. Reliability. Um, Tesla seems to be pretty good, just in general. I, I don't know why this would be any different. Um, they seem to hold up pretty well. There's a lot less moving components being electric. The battery packs seem to be okay. Obviously, the oldest Teslas, mainstream Teslas, if you will, are only about 10 years old now. I guess we'll see in another 10 years, but I don't know. I think you, if there was anything catastrophic going on, you'd know in the span of 10 years, I feel like, so... I'm pretty comfortable saying that they're they're pretty pretty well off. And then that brings me to my last point. Is it truly better than the competition? Uh, I guess we'll see, right, when they really hit the market. Um, but on paper slash from the reviews and stuff I've seen, I mean, I would say maybe. And by that I mean it depends on what you're doing. I think the F-150 Lightning being that it's the most normal truck looking truck is the probably the best right now for your average Joe construction worker type guy who 
just needs a truck that he can take his gas up 150, slide that electric F150 into place, and it works the same way almost that he's used to, right? Um, I think the cyber truck would probably take a lot of getting used to, again, with the upfitting stuff and like ladder racks and toolboxes. You know, you might have to just come up with different systems, which is fine, but maybe not something you want to have to do if you've been, you know, work, running your business a certain way for 30 years. It might just not make the most sense. You know, or maybe it does. Maybe you do it more efficiently. So it's just something you got to put thought into. So from that perspective, you know, I think it's not necessarily the most commercially good truck, but on the, like, lifestyle, personal level, probably one of the best. Probably one of the best. Um, just specs-wise, capability-wise, Tesla is just obviously the biggest name in electric vehicles. So I'm thinking it's probably the way to go as opposed to the Hummer, um, especially, because that's kind of as close as competition, just physical size-wise and everything else. So, yeah, I guess as these things hit the road and hit dealerships, well, not really dealerships, but, you know, hit, hit the customer population, um, we'll see, you know, we'll see what people think and, and get them in the hands of real-world, you know, buyers and reviewers, uh, and uh, we'll keep our eye on them. But for now, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. God bless America, and I'll see you in the next one. Come on. Come here. We'll show you a little shot of the dog quick. Oh. <laughs> Bye.